nombre croissant de travaux explore les relations entre le genre et le changement climatique, le genre et l'urbanisation, ou encore le lien entre l'urbanisation et le changement climatique. Cependant, la manière spécifique dont les questions transversales de genre et de changement climatique recoupent les processus d'urbanisation reste encore peu explorée. Qu'est-ce que le croisement de ces trois domaines de concentration peut apporter à notre compréhension de l'urbanisation, à la politique du changement climatique ou encore à l'égalité des femmes et des hommes Travailler dans ce triangle peut-il aider à affiner et même à stimuler les revendications militantes en cours, aider à dépasser la notion de résilience et aller vers une véritable justice climatique Est-ce que ce triangle peut nous aider à affûter les interventions stratégiques et la planification d'actions stratégiques dans notre monde en voie d'urbanisation Gender has been really absent from the development debates and the urban development debates specifically in the last 20 years, having been probably at the forefront of some of the critical thinking uh, about the interface between individuals, households and the city scale uh, in the 90s. And to some extent, the climate change literature emerged in a period when there really was very little about gender in any aspect of the urban debate. And so it's not really surprising that genders come into the climate discussions very late, because it's come back into the urban discussions uh, only very recently. I think it's interesting that the UN Framework Convention on Climate Change actually was one of the only three big uh, sustainable development conventions that had no mention initially of issues to do with women or gender. And it wasn't until COP7 in Marrakesh that there was any discussion of the role of, of gender equality or women's activism. To climate change. They have sort of crept in and we see um, organizations like WIDA, the Women's Environment and Development Organization, uh, the Gender Climate Alliance, which are beginning to sort of bring this discussion to the debate, but it's still, it's still relatively absent. UN General Assembly's agreement on the new SDGs last month, we now have another opportunity to bring together the questions of gender, urban and climate change to bring together what are now Goal 5, Goal 11 and Goal 13. So for example, in reflecting on climate change adaptation, the gender target of elimination of all forms of violence uh, against women in public and private space links very clearly to the urban target of providing universal access to safe, inclusive and accessible public space. Similarly, the recognition and value of care and domestic work through the provision of public services and infrastructure, the gender target, links very clearly to the uh, provision of housing and basic services, an urban target. And when we consider both climate change adaptation and mitigation, both target 5 and target 11 consider participation as a central issue free access to move freely in public space is also a supporting uh, target in this, in this particular uh, question of participation because without the freedom to move in public space women cannot participate fully in the decision making and leadership around the future implementation of SDGs. Definitivamente eh, con el tema de género ha ido pasando un proceso de evolución, lo mismo que ha pasado con el tema de riesgos. ¿no? El tema de riesgos ha evolucionado desde verlo vinculado a un desastre, una emergencia y la guerra, y luego a vincularse con el desarrollo. Creo que el tema de mujer ha tenido un paralelo también, o el tema de género ha tenido un paralelo, que parte de una visión de primero visibilizar a la mujer, ¿sí? y luego visibilizarla en un campo específico, visibilizarla con el desarrollo, mujer desarrollo, mujer medio ambiente, mujer cambio climático hoy, pero es una evolución teórica, una evolución conceptual, pero que en el momento que vas viéndolo en la práctica, esto no es tan, tan plasmado. La dificultad era en hacer entender la voz de las mujeres para ocupar las cuestiones de acceso al logement, de acceso a los servicios de base, a las infraestructuras, a, a la energía, a los réseaux, y peu a peu también a des, a des servicios sociales. Les questions environnementales sont arrivées après, quand nous nous occupions aussi des questions de développement durable, notamment des questions de gestion des déchets, des questions énergétiques, de l'accès à l'eau. 
Voilà, toutes ces questions-là euh, se sont posées à partir des années 90 dans le cadre de l'accès aux services urbains. Les questions climatiques sont arrivées euh, bien après. Et donc ce sont des mouvements qui se croisent euh, aujourd'hui. Pour ce qui est des, des pays francophones, il y a un enjeu qu'il faut mettre sur la table, c'est le fait que la question du, du genre en fait, est vraiment le, un parent pauvre quand même au niveau des, des politiques et de la manière dont les, les politiques publiques abordent, y compris les, les questions d'urbanisation. On a évidemment en Afrique francophone particulièrement une urbanisation beaucoup plus lente, tardive, moins massive que ce qu'on peut observer en, en Amérique latine par exemple ou dans, le, dans certains pays asiatiques. Et de fait, la, la question de l'urbanisation s'est traitée beaucoup plus à travers les, la question des, des infrastructures, notamment la question de, de, de l'accès à l'eau, euh, les outils économiques, la question de l'accès des femmes au, au marché, par exemple. Euh, et il y a vraiment un sujet qui n'apparaît pas, et on, si on fait une recherche de ce qui est écrit, notamment en, en français, sur ces questions-là, on voit bien qu'il y a un, un, une absence absolument remarquable de, 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 de réflexion et de travail sur le lien entre l'urbanisation, le genre et les questions de gouvernance et de justice sociale. Women and men experience everyday living in the urban context differently and solutions to um, the challenges should also be genderized, but that is, hasn't been the case. And furthermore, we run a patriarchal system where there's a male dominant culture and we also have a government that is male dominant. And so the voices of the males of the men are heard higher and louder than those of the women. We were invited to different spaces and we even created some spaces to discuss with experts, with scientists and central government uh, you know, representatives. And then the male predominance appeared again. So it was like uh, the scientists you know, were mainly men. And then we were like put it aside again. But also the issue of the city were, was put aside. It, it ended up in you know the same, you know, with an ability and uh, the people, the, the women will be in the most uh, poor of, and agricultural activities, indigenous activities, and the cities were lost again. And the pollution or the scarcity of the water in the cities again was a discussion of mega projects and dams and, and big things but not how to save water into the cities, how to connect with the people and the habitus of consumption of water, how to save energy into the houses, etc. There is clearly um, a very problematic disruption in the way in which we treat the links uh, between uh, gender, climate change uh, and urbanization. On the one hand, significant progress has been achieved uh, in identifying and challenging how and why gender roles are socially constructed in cities. On the other hand, if we look at the debates on climate change, we will find uh, that uh, an increasing acknowledgement of questions concerned with the maldistribution of burdens and benefits, but often tackled at a scale that excludes uh, the urban dimension, at a macro scale, I would say, and with very, very little consideration of what do these links mean for women and men living in cities. We need to push this debate um, beyond the acknowledgement that men and women are vulnerable to climate change in different ways. Um, and doing so means going beyond just the recognition of issues to, connected to the maldistribution of these burdens and benefits. Uh, we need to ask ourselves not only what is happening, what is distributed, but also why is that maldistribution happens in the first place. And this um, pushes us to think and to talk about uh, issues of mild recognition and lack of parity, of participation of women and men in shaping climate justice in cities. When you talk about the theme of gender with reduction of risk, the discourse starts with that the woman is vulnerable. La mujer forma parte de los grupos vulnerables ¿sí? y la mujer es la que tendría que buscar soluciones ad hoc que están muy vinculadas a su actividad construida socialmente. ¿sí? Entonces no se aborda el tema desde las brechas y diferencias, brechas oportunidades, ¿no? brechas capacidades, brechas actividades o roles sociales, ¿no? sino se aborda más en términos de efectivamente 
qué es lo que hace la mujer, cómo la puede empoderar, o cómo, pero no abordas la problemática en su conjunto. So some of the basics that I think that a, a, a gendered understanding of, of urban climate change helps you to do is exactly that question of asking about who is impacted, why are they impacted, and what can be done to ameliorate that impact if it is a highly differentiated impact. I think for me the, the place where the gender and climate uh, and urban lens comes together is in the debate about public space. When you think about public space, it's the thing where you really need to be thinking about who is able to make the changes which will maximize the benefits for everybody. And it's only when you ask the questions about the for everybody that you typically include both men and women. With regards to climate change, in Lagos, Nigeria, the major manifestations of climate change that we have are with um, flooding and um, drainage issues because we, we are in a coastal area and then these unfortunate events usually are uh, it is the voices of the men that are heard because they are the ones that lose their houses they're the ones that lose their homes and their businesses whereas the voices of the women are less heard because they they have less access to power they have less access to information and they have less access to influence. La ville ne va être des femmes d'une manière générale et bien liée, d'après notre avis, à la division sexuelle du travail. Vous savez, en milieu urbain, les femmes évoluent dans les secteurs informels. Au Sénégal, presque 82% des femmes sont dans l'informel. Et ça, c'est en raison de leur faible niveau de scolarisation de leur charge de domestique et des préjugés sur le rôle féminin. Donc, euh, le point de vue de la vulnérabilité des femmes est très pertinent dans les discussions portant sur le contexte urbain. Surtout que, bon, avec euh, le problème des changements climatiques, disons que les femmes rurales immigrent et euh, en général viennent dans les villes pour trouver du travail. Et bien sûr, c'est dans le secteur informel. Donc, même le problème, euh, disons, rural, je peux dire, est transféré à un milieu, à un milieu urbain. Les périodes post-catastrophe peuvent aussi être des opportunités pour de nouveaux leaderships, pour peu que les programmes soient organisés de façon démocratique et en prêtant attention, en ne reproduisant pas les structures sociales anciennes, qui peuvent être très inégales et très injustes, mais en organisant, en profitant, disons, pour euh, proposer une organisation sociale plus démocratique. It's interesting that Naomi Klein, who has been working on climate change recently, has pointed out that one of the biggest problems for, for solutions to climate change is that we're living in an era of what she calls market fundamentalism. And I think what's interesting in relation to the intersection of of gender, urbanization, and climate change is market fundamentalism is also a significant problem for, for gender justice and urbanization processes. In terms of climate change, the point that has been made that uh, market fundamentalism means a reluctance to have state intervention in the regulation of businesses involved in climate and constant suggestions of sort of market solutions to climate change. Um, which haven't been notably successful. This debate takes us to think not only about questions of who is affected by climate change, but also where, at what scale and why. And furthermore, it also uh, pushes us to think about questions about planning, urban planning. What are we doing as planners? Um, it is clear that our role as planners is not just to minimize the unwanted effects of climate change, but uh, more precisely to look at what role planning takes in producing uh, gender uh, unequal relations in cities. For instance, if we look at transport planning, we find still a prevailing approach uh, originated in the Chicago School, uh, exported uh, from Western planners, that is still persists on the idea of nowadays seeing and treating cities as closed loops, uh, 
as a fossil fuel hungry structures. And what is usually overlooked is the type of uh, gender biases and gender divisions and differences that are reinforced actually uh, through uh, the, uh, the strategies adopted. If we do not ask these questions, we very much uh, follow the risk of reinforcing gender inequality in cities in the name of planning and in the name of climate change. Donc je pense que la question de changement climatique, c'est euh, une thématique qu'on ne peut pas aborder sans aborder de front la question de la justice sociale et la question de la participation en politique. Si les femmes ne sont pas dans cet espace public qu'elles subissent euh, dans les villes, eh bien elles ne peuvent pas, euh, elles ne peuvent pas, ah oui, elles ne peuvent pas apporter ni leurs, ni leurs préoccupations, ni leurs solutions, parce que nous savons bien qu'elles sont aussi porteuses de nombreuses solutions. Mais on ne peut pas faire appel à elles uniquement pour des solutions micro, uniquement pour mettre du pansement sur les plaies. À un moment donné, il va vraiment falloir se poser la question de la, de la, de la participation des femmes à un niveau de politique beaucoup, beaucoup plus important, et surtout se poser la question de comment genre, climat et urbanisation se travaillent à un niveau macro, parce que vraiment, pour le moment, on est encore au, au balbutiement de reconnaître l'impact de ces trois dimensions à un niveau micro, ça n'a pas encore percuté au niveau méso et c'est encore très très loin de percuter au niveau, au niveau macro. The debate around climate change is focused very much on what are seen as technical issues related to changes in the economic base of production and um, technological solutions to emissions and climate change. And I think the issue there is if you look at those sort of techn technical areas of knowledge production around economics and around science, those are the areas of knowledge production which are notable for their gender blindness and also for the absence of women as a significant proportion of sort of professionals in those areas. While some of the global um, issues can be gender neutral in finding solutions in the local context the impact on women and men must be documented and it must be investigated and solutions must derive therefrom and it is also important that we take into consideration the cultural dynamics of the areas that we're looking at like i said earlier in lagos the strength for the women is in the non-monetary networks the cooperatives the rotating credit schemes, the religious organizations, the community women, they come together and they have been able to come up with certain solutions that protect them and their children. Là, nous pensons que la femme, les connaissances locales peuvent-elles apporter une nouvelle vision? Bon, il faut dire que la femme porte en elle un capital social qui doit être valorisé. Et à ce titre, il faut un fort plaidoyer pour porter de nouvelles visions genrées. Il faut en parler et revendiquer la place de la femme dans la lutte contre ces, ces impacts de changement climatique. De quel développement nous sommes parlant ¿sí? O sea, de développement pour qui Et quand nous parlions avec les femmes, elles avaient beaucoup plus agudeza pour faire cette analyse, parce qu'elles voyaient, bon, oui, effectivement, à moi, me está favoreciendo en lo actual, pero no favorece a mis hijos, no va a favorecer a mis hijos. El hombre era más pragmático, no, sí, ahora me basta, ¿no? Y para mí el desarrollo es tener condiciones mejores de, o una mejor condición de vida, la condición y no la calidad. Para la mujer estaba más en función de la calidad. Si hubiera un encuentro de ello, ¿sí? de estas dos percepciones, yo creo que se podría generar un una visión más compartida, ¿sí? El diálogo se hace más difícil cuando ya es un nivel político, ¿sí? Que esto no se percibe. It seems to me that one of the things we have to be able to do is we have to ensure that what we don't have is a scientific community that does climate change or large-scale big public urban management, which is largely male, largely scientific on the one hand, and on the other hand, we have a set of social development people who are largely female, who focus on informal kinds of networks, 
who are interested in micro questions, not city connections, not city scale questions. They're not interested in things like tariffs, they're not interested in things like design. You have to be able to both learn from practice, but you have to be able to scale that up. And that means dealing with some hard questions. So, questions of finances, questions of technical design, um, as well as questions of use, of ownership, um, of identity. And those things have to come together. And so that means that we need lots and lots of female scientists. And we need some men who actually are able to engage with community practice. So, so beginning to kind of move beyond the gender stereotypes. And in cities of the global south, that's a real challenge. If you look at climate change, the main solutions actually seem to be to do with politics and to do with social change. So I think if we rely solely on expertise to do with these technical issues, we're going to be in trouble. I think the, the invisibility of gender in discussions around climate change and urbanization is not just a, an intellectual oversight. It reflects generally our difficulties to integrate issues of the cross-cutting issues of gender and climate change in discussions about urban development planning and urban development policy. And that has real repercussions because if we continue to render um, gender invisible when we discuss climate compatible urban development, then we run a very real risk of perpetuating or promoting um, unjust forms of urbanization, unjust forms of resilience. And we see that actually already happening in many of the mitigation and adaptation strategies that are being promoted. So, for instance, the, the technological approach to service provision, huh? like for instance the digital grids to service provision, that manage service provision that you see in eco-cities or smart cities. What these solutions don't do, by and large, is that they don't integrate the notion of gender or of difference. And what that means is that they seem to imply that the power relations that structure access to information, to resources, or to decision making around services is just not present or is not really worth mentioning. And I think if we're going to be serious about thinking about and trying to act towards more sustainable urbanizations and more just transition, then we really need to make this question of gender, this question of difference, much, much more central to our analysis and our ways of thinking and acting. The mentions to the adaptations, but the money to the mitigation. So again, it's more or less like mitigation technology to the corporation, to the central government, to the scientists, and adaptation to the communities, but not the money. <laughs> but the tax are there, and the mentions are there at least. So I hope next year in Paris, or this year in Paris, will be Thank you.